The first and foremost is Janaza funeral prayer and burial of our beloved brother, Walidin Ahmed Sahib, who passed away on 25th of June, a couple of days back. After a brief ailment, he was suffering from kidney problem and there was an infection and in a very short while he passed away. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajim. We will inshallah ta'ala offer the funeral prayer after, immediately after the Juma. So we will all men will move from here outside where this casket will be and we will say our prayer led by Maulana Sahib. And then after that we will immediately go to the burial site for his burial. Brother Walid Din Sahib was a pious, steadfast and passionate Ahmadi. He accepted Ahmadiyat in the early 1990s. Brother Walid Din Sahib got introduced to Ahmadiyat through our late Naib Amir Sahib, Munir Hamid Sahib and Bilal Abdul Islam Sahib. And these were the days when this small bunch of Ahmadis used to have a Super Sunday Tabligh outing in the center city. And then onwards, <laughs> Brother Walid Din Sahib started coming to this Nasir Mosque and within a short span of time, he accepted Ahmadiyya. Alhamdulillah, Azad. Brother Walidin Sahib was a very diligent Ahmadi, steadfast and focused. He very clearly understood that saying regular prayers at the mosque is of utmost importance. And thus he moved his residence next to this Nasir Mosque. It was he who kept this mosque open for all prayers. Brother Walidin had great passion for Tabligh and to address issues of youngsters, and he actively worked for that. He attended all Jamaat program in spite of his ailment and understood the importance of Khalaf of the Ahmadi. He was employed by the city as an engineer, specializing in steam boilers machineries. He was holding the office of property secretary of the Philadelphia chapter from long time. He executed his responsive responsibilities with due diligence. Brother Walidin would be ever remembered by Ahmadis of Philadelphia, by the Ahmadis of Philadelphia and to all his next to kin as a loving, passionate and helpful soul, always ready to serve Jamaat and the mankind in general. We all pray that may Allah Ta'ala so elevate his position in Jannah, and we all pray for the Kareem family. This was in reference of the passing away of Brother Walid Deen Sahib to the eternal life. In addition, there are other announcements. Please remember Huzur, our beloved Khalifa of the time, in your prayers. May Allah strengthen him. Please remember the sick people of the Jamaat, especially for the for Khushid Sahib, remember in your prayers, Brother Ramdan Ali, Mahmoud Sahib, Muhammad Aziz Sahib. There's an update, the new mosque, everybody knows that the new mosque is up and coming, and alhamdulillah. Please remember to pay the dues if you have pledged, and if you're not, still you pay, the, pay for the pledges for the building of the new mosque. Financial year of Jamaat Ahmadiyya is going to end in just a few days, so if there is still some pending dues, we are obliged to pay, please pay today. We have a shelter feeding on June 30th, Monday, at our brotherly place near 10th and Spring Garden. The cooking will start at 3 p.m. and serving at 5. If you are interested to learn Holy Quran uh, recitation in Arabic, there is a program here at, after Juma prayers, uh, Brother Intiaz Raji Kisab conducts that and one to one also he is available. So if you are interested, contact him. We welcome our guests here today, the family of uh, Brother Walid Deen. They have come from far flung areas. So they are welcome here and we pray and remember them in your prayers, please. We also welcome Brother Kareem and Sister Brittany. So we keep ourselves in, involved in saying salutation to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam by the time Mawlana Sahib joins us for 
lead us in the good bar and grace. If you are interested to get the, uh, if you are going for the burial, the address is with us, so you can take the directions for driving towards the burial site, which is about 25 minutes from here, and it's about 13 miles.
is Surah al -Tawbah. The chapter which speaks about repentance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna laha lahu mulkus samawati wal ard. Surely it is Allah to whom belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. Yuhyi, he gives life when you meet and causes death. وَمَا لَكُمْ مِن دُونَ اللَّهِ مِن وَلِيٍ وَلَا نَصِيرٍ And you have no friend nor helper besides Allah. In just two verses of the Quran, the inspire of an entire believer's life, the purpose of it, the goal of it, the destiny of it is also mentioned as well as the way in which we can achieve the ultimate and grand fulfillment of that purpose and success. Allah is reminding us and telling us of this life being impermanent and that He being permanent. And so all our relationships we have to constantly analyze. And I'm sure as believers this is something we're always doing. Analyzing the beings into whom we invest our heart and our soul, to whom we give our trust and turn to for our help and our assistance, and who we believe can truly do that, and recognize that the only true friend and helper we really have is God Almighty. And there is nothing and no one else who truly is our friend and helper. Even the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu once mentioned very clearly about his companions, that I have one friend and that friend alone is Allah. <clears throat> and if there were a person in this earth I would choose as a friend, that would be Hazrat Abu Bakr. Allah be pleased with him. However, he said, only Allah is my friend. And this thus remains the focus of every true believer in life. Although this is the greatest challenge of a world of human relations. A world in which we need the assistance of others to move forward. A world in which Allah says these things are sources of his mercy. But we must not forget the source, even though we turn toward the support of our family, our friends, our colleagues, our associates, our neighbors, whoever they may be. I just want to leave you with thus a story to ponder today. It's a story shared often by our beloved second Khalifa, Hazrat Mirza Bashir Ali Mahmoud, Allah be pleased with them, about the sign of a true friend and who is our true friend in life. And he mentions in this story condition which many people struggle in life, they began to make friends but not know who their friend is. He says there was a young man who was in the habit of wasting his father's wealth on his friends all the time. He always was surrounded by a group of flatterers. People always yes, yes men as you say. And they wasted his money day and night. His father constantly told him they are just flattering you and they are selfish young men. They do not have real love for you. And so therefore, do not destroy and waste all your wealth on them. But this young man never accepted his father's advice and responded, Dad, they are my true friends. The father then said, How is it possible that you have such a large group of friends? Well, I have been able to find only one close friend in my life. How come there is such a large gathering of friends around you all the time? Time passed, and this young man never accepted his father's advice. One day the father said, If you do not trust me, then conduct a trial and test your friends. Then you will know how many real friends you have. The son asked, How may I test my friends? His father replied, Go to every friend's home and tell them that your father has evicted you from his house and has taken away all your possessions and properties and then ask them to provide you some money so that you may arrange some sources of livelihood. When he went to his friend's homes and told him that his father had evicted him, one sent out a message to a servant that he was sick and regretted that he could not meet him that day. Another offered another excuse saying that he had the money but had just given it to someone else that very moment. And on and on to each and every friend he met, 
he received these replies in his thesis. The young man returned home empty-handed and said to his father that what you have been telling me all these years has proven true. No one was my true friend and helper. The father then said, let me show you my friend. He then took his son to the wilderness, and outside the town he reached a house and called out a name, and inside there was an inquiry, who is this? The father announced his own name. The voice from inside the house said, okay. Then there was dead silence without a response for half an hour. The son finally turned to his father and said, you see, father, your friend has proven just the same as mine. The father, however, said, do not be impatient. Just wait. You will soon know why he has taken so long to come out. A few minutes later, the father's friend came out holding the hand of his wife. He had a sheath fastened to his waist and a sword in the other hand. As he came out, he said, forgive me, my friend. You came at midnight, and I have been delayed since you knocked at the door. I assume that your coming at midnight had some purpose in it. I thought maybe you are in trouble, and you could come to me for help. On this thought, I picked up my sword because this is what I would use to help you. Then I thought that although you are a billionaire, even billionaires can have financial problems and may need any money they can find. I had collected four to five hundred dollars, penny by penny, throughout my life, and had buried them. I dug the ground and extracted that bag. I was further delayed in thinking that maybe your wife is not well, and there may be some need to tend to her, so I awoke my wife and brought her along with you. All these three things are at your disposal. How can I help? He said to his son, my son, these are the true friends. This is the example mentioned in many of the sermons of our beloved Second Khalifa to remind us of this truth. Remind us never to lose sight of our true friend and always strive our best night and day, all our strength, all our might, all our resources, all our time and energy to strengthen that relation with our true friend and to live as his friend and to die, God willing, as his friend and to be raised amongst his true friends in the hereafter. May our God enable all of us to do so. Amen. With that, I would just like to say and note this verse of the Quran uses the word wali. And we know that the brother who has passed just recently this week in, in Philadelphia, but the wali dean, this was a man, as I just mentioned in this, this uh, story, who was ready to serve Jamaat people, all of us, day and night, and yet always behind the scenes. Is that the person you see roaming around the front or in the front of the crowd or taking the microphone? He was always, his hand was on every part of this property, every part of this Jamaat member was benefit from him. On this day, let's remember how he was a friend of God, and let's pray for him, and Allah may bless his soul, raise his rank, amongst the true friends of God, and continue to do so in the life which is hereafter. As has been announced after the Juma prayer, we'll have the janazah for Brother Wadi Dean, and then proceed to the cemetery. 
I also request you to pray for two souls who also departed very recently, this past this Sunday. That was the Emir of Ghana, Walbi Abu Wahab Adam, who was a Emir for a long, long time in Ghana and truly served Jamaat Parkinson for the Lord in his life. He came to Philadelphia a few times and we have met him, but in general, trust me, this person, as you were mentioned in this sermon today, was truly a, a blessed soul who served this Jamaat, served his nation, and received a state burial, in fact, as a great honor for the service of his nation. The other person I request to be prayed in another way today, Brother Asim Taki Mashinudi, who passed away in Seattle, Washington, a pioneer African-American member, again, was a president for many, many years, under the radar, under the notice, but a true, humble servant of God. These people deserve our prayers. Please remember both of them, all three of them today, in our prayers.
Islamic burial is both ways. We are dirt, we go back to dirt. This is Islamic way also, that we bury the person in the grave, we cover it up and put the dirt. Or we can also do it in a box, it is also optional. So this one will let everybody know that it is both ways is okay in Islam. I have come in the middle. You got to stand over there in the middle. See what happened now? No, we got more people on the side. We are going to hold six people. I will give you the body over here and then you will lower it down. So everybody should be on that side. Okay, can somebody else can come? One more. Um, I don't know whether that's strong enough for you or not. Go down. Alright, now, now we need six more people over here. We can lift the body. Come over here and start with the bird first. 